Right, so the 200 pound course has turned up. And uh, my old mate Adrian's delivered it for me. Great service as always. He did give me a bit of warning before I got here actually that it had bad paint. We've got a bit along the bumper here, bad paint. And we've got a scuff on the rear quarter here and a scuff here. But to be honest, the rest of it looks all right. I didn't expect this much paint work. I didn't look at the pictures quite closely enough. But we know I can rattle can sort that out, no problem at all. If mechanically it's sound and it's just that paint, I think I, I do, I'm doing all right. But Adrian tells me there is a management engine management light on it. Inside, sorry for all the background noise, guys. Inside, um, it looks all right. It looks like it just needs a good clean. Oh God, the back's covered. Looks like they've had a dog. Bloody L8 dogs. So anyway, we'll get it off the trailer and then we'll have a little drive around the industrial estate and we'll see what we uh, what we think of it. What I'm gonna say to you guys is you were right. A lot of you said in the comments, it's, you know, don't drop prices. Don't worry about it. Things are quiet at the moment. It'll pick up um, when, it, when I had a total blank last month. And now all of a sudden I've got loads of phone calls, loads of people wanting cars, and I'd already dropped all the prices. So um, I've probably taken a hit on a number of these cars that I could have done for more money. I'm sure I could have got 2995 for my red 2013 KA, even though it's a Cat N, because it only had just 32,000 miles and a load of people wanted it, but I went for 2795. I'm sure in the current market with things picking up, I probably could have got 2795 for this, um, but I've got 2495 for it. I'm sure I probably got near a three grand for the uh, 2010, but I've let that go for 2895. This one, 2013, with 80,000 miles on, because it's still left here, I'll put the price back up to 295, because I think it's worth 295. It was already well under book at my, when I dropped it to 2795. I'm going to up to 2995, because I'm, it's hard to get stock at the moment. So, um, yeah, so I'll put the price back up on that one. Haven't started on the Corsa yet. No interest in the Micra, but again, I'm not going to panic and drop price now things have got busier and uh, still got the Dacia. So again, that's a good keen price on that. So I'm going to stick where I am with that at the moment. I don't desperately need to sell it. Bloody dust from that place has covered everything again. I need to get out and clean everything again. It's uh, a nightmare with them over the road. But yes, so those of you that made those comments about things just being quiet at the moment and they'd pick up, pat yourselves on the back because cars are starting to sell at the kind of speeds that um, I'm used to them doing before. Have one another car today, uh, so we better hop on the computer and have a look at that. It's another banger bid, a bit like the old uh, Corsa here. So let's hop on and have a quick look at what that was. Right, let's have a quick spin. First things up, inspection due. That, okay, we've got an engine management light. We'll plug that in and find out what that's about in a bit. So let me, I've got my seatbelt on. We've got half a tank of fuel. 72,496 miles, which I think is good for this age of car. 2007. Let's get out without smashing uh, Stu's Porsche. Right. Let's have a quick look, see. Engine started with no rattle, so that's all right. Um, obviously, it yeah, was starting to bought off the trailer, so it could be that it's a little bit warmer now. But normally, if they are bad, bad, they'll rattle anyway. Um, clutch is good. And let's get up into third gear. Yeah, okay, back into second. Gearbox seems okay. No knocks and bangs on the suspension over those speed bumps. So that's a good sign. Accelerate smoothly. Just warned me about my seatbelt again. Uh, let's try and get a couple more gears. So accelerate, third, fourth. It's all right. Okie dokie. So reading the codes, let's say we've got a lambda sensor out. Stuart informs me it's pre-cat. So uh, that should be in the engine bay, relatively easy to get to, depending on how the threads are for the Lambda sensor. Get it nice and hot first. So if that is all it is, which is telling us what it is, not the end of the world. So we'll crack on and get that done, and then uh, before we go any further with the bodywork, and check that it's worth doing the bodywork, but we'll get it done and clear the codes and see where we are. Have a quick 
walk around tires nearly, nearly new on the front nearly new on the back loads of tread loads of tread loads of tread there loads of tread there so not having to worry about tires inside again other than a bit of crud and a sm slight dog smell we've got one cigarette burn in the back a bit of worn carpet down there I might glue a mat down over the top of that. Tried the aircon, that's blowing cold. Um, yeah. So quick look in the boot. She looks. Oh, uh, we've got some coarser cool, mats in the back there. And underneath that, oh, it's like a secondary shelf. I haven't seen that before in one of these. And um, we've got a good spare Continental. Looks like it's never been out. Don't see a toolkit, might have to stick one of those in there. Oh, actually, no, what have we got in here? No, nothing in there. We've got a toolkit in this side? No, nothing in there. So, I might have to stick a toolkit in there. But other than that, seems alright. So, let's get the lambda sensor changed out. And then we can get started on the bodywork. Get in, guys, we want a VTR. I love VTRs. It's always a roll of the dice when they turn out whether the. Um, engine smoking or not but 1350 quid for a 2013 it's actually a two registered 2013 so get in 76,000 miles that should theoretically be a flyer they always fly out the door i had a bit of 1400 pound in it can't remember the condition um i imagine it's gonna need a little bit of work but i've got that matching paint already in rattle cans for that white so fingers crossed when it turns up it runs well but I'm going to offer a 2013 one with 76,000 miles for 2995, which is a keen price. It's at that magic sub 3k mark. Uh, I'm going to predict that should go out quickly. I've got a second bid here on a Mito 1.416 valve Luso 2010. Uh, I bid 700 pounds. It's been provisionally sold. I'm not going to go up in price on that. Um, it's in probably a 1995er. They have to be cheap, the Mitos to go. So. I would think that we might not do a deal on that, but we'll see, we'll see. So yeah, so I got back from driving the little Matiz back and uh, we've got those two wins. So uh, again, I'll let you know, guys see them as soon as they come in, as I always do. Hey guys, I know I already told you you were right, but you're like super right now. This is sold in the last 24 hours. That's sold, that's sold. Black KA is sold. Um. So the white KA, so what are we looking at? The white KA sold, the red KA, sorry, yeah. Start again, last 24 hours. The red KA sold, the black KA sold, the white Yaris sold, the red Yar Yaris sold, and obviously the white KA went out a couple of days before that. So last 24 hours has been mental. As soon as lockdown came off, ba -ba -ba bang, sold like three cars straight away. Um, and I've now sold five cars in this month and sold nothing last month so um things have definitely picked up this one is the uh, other chap who wanted to see the red ka has bought the black one his girlfriend really wanted the white yaris but i've already agreed to deal on that haven't i so yeah it's got really busy so i've still got to prep the corsa i haven't done anything with that no interest as of yet on the uh suzuki i had a couple of messages i'm not sure that will go that drives brilliantly no messages yet on the Nissan Micro, but I've got a lady supposed to be popping by today that wants to look at stuff and I'm probably going to have a look at that because that's a great car, I drove it home last night again to charge the battery up, drives brilliant uh, obviously just got this one in and the Dacia so um, but today uh, it looks like I might well have won the VTR and the um, Mito, so if I can turn these spots around twice within this month I will if people are buying at the moment let's make sure we've got stock for them to be buying but I need to get cracking now because I need to valet and clean these cars before they go to the people I've got the MOT the black KA that's going to go in first thing uh, I've got to get on and do the paint and tidy up this Corsa of night um, and get on and do the brakes and bits and bobs on the little uh, on the little Chevrolet Matiz so guys the black KA I sold I put in for an MOT today because it only had five months left on it I wanted them to have the cars to go out with a minimum of six months on them only failed on the position of the windscreen wiper it wasn't quite clear on the screen so I changed that but it did have an advisory for uh, a little bit of a coolant leak on it which i hadn't spotted and looking now it looks like it's coming from the water pump 
I think this has had a cam, but I think what's well, not from me, but I think because you can always tell when a stick has been moved on the cam cover. Uh, I think someone's cheaped out and not put a water pump on at the same time. Some dealers do that um, to save money. It only saves about 30 quid, but it's a complete waste of time. So I'm about to contact the customer. I'm going to tell them, um, like I said, that it's uh, it's uh, only needed the arm adjusting, but there is that corner leak. My plan is I'm going to put a whole new cam belt kit on it. It's a 250 quid book job. It'll cost me about 80 quid in parts. I'm going to do oil filter, air filter at the same time. And then we can be sure that there aren't going to be any problems. So fresh cam belt, fresh water pump at the same time, because obviously the water pump is driven by the cam belt. So I can't just put a water pump on it. Um, and then he knows for the next five years um, that he won't have to do a cam belt on it. And this is why you buy from dealers, guys. This is why you pay the extra 500 pounds to buy from a dealer, because I can guarantee you this kind of thing. I could have put this for an MOT, passed it for just adjusting the wiper blade. And if someone didn't go and look at the old uh, MOT history, they'd be none the wiser that they've got a coolant leak and they'd probably end up cooking the engine. Um, it's going to be time more than anything, more than cost. Obviously, that's say this kit's only about 60, 70 quid to me, but I'll be in it for about another three or four hours changing the cam belt over. Um, but I can then stand behind this car and have a customer that isn't going to end up cooking their engine six months later down the road because they were completely unaware of it. But yeah, other than that, it was just uh, needed the wiper arm adjusting. So let's go and give them a call now and check that he's happy with all of that. So yeah, cam belt is a go. Customer obviously would like the car quicker, but I'm going to try and get it done for them this afternoon. But yeah, let's get the cam belt switched out and then we can be utterly confident in this sale that um, engine-wise they aren't going to have any problems. Here you go. Well, here's what happens if you cheap out and don't do the water pump at the same time. I don't know if you guys can see all the purple or uh, the pinky coolant down there. That's all come from the water pump, uh, which is just there. And uh, it's a part that costs about 20, 30 quid on its own. Um, and obviously the cam belt runs it. It's four bolts to take it out. It takes two minutes to swap it out. It saves you 30 quid, but don't do it. And you have to do the cam belt all over again. So, and this isn't the first time I've come across this. I know a dealer selling a Fiat 500 who flatly refused to put one in for the sake of 30 quid. So, there you go. It's out and it looks like it's been coming on the centre shaft there. And you can see it leaking around here. So it hasn't failed, as in the bearing's still all right on it. Um, but it's obviously failed along the shaft and leaked there. So we'll get a new one in. Just got to clean up all this red gunk, whoever did it last, put on there. So I've finished balloting the black Ford KA, all the cam belts done, oil, air filter, oil filter, done, coolant, all that. So big service done, customer will have to do oil and filters for the next five years now. I've given her a clean and then I've given her a black, a special black ceramic coating. I like to put a ceramic coating on the cars because then when they go out, um, and it rains, the water beads off it and runs off. It keeps you looking smart. It's just that extra little service I think that people will appreciate. On the 200 pound Corsa, so it's the 2007 little Corsa I got from BCA for 200 pounds. It had the engine management light on it, didn't it? For a um, oxygen sensor, just swap that out. Hence a little bit of smoke coming off the engine bay where I use a bit of WD-40 to get the old one out. Um, just cleared the codes. Uh, engine, no engine management light anymore. And she's running a lot better. I know a lot of you have told me, and Petey's told me as well, that the oxygen sensor can often be um, a bit of a red herring, and it can be a number of other things. But uh, it seems to have fixed it for now. Obviously, you need to take it for a little drive, make sure it doesn't fry up a code again. But next thing up is to get onto this bodywork. So we've got to spray this rear quarter and this bumper where someone started the job and didn't finish it. So we're going to get cracking on that and then uh, obviously give the rest of it clean and hopefully get it up for sale for the weekend. So let's get cracking. First up, we're going to get some uh, traffic film remover and get the panel cleaned up. Uh, I'm going to clay bar it after as well, get all the dirt off it. And we spray into about this line here. So I just want to get this panel clean for the moment. I'm not taking it outside and washing it off because it's pouring the rain. 
I'll have to wait hours for the bodywork to dry off before I can uh, get onto it. So I'm just going to give it all a thorough clean this way, all the bits I'm going to be working on. Because I'm going to be sanding it in a second as well, which will create a load of mess. But I just want to stop. I don't want to be um, sanding any of the grime into the paintwork. So I'm just going to give it a quick clean off first on that side of things. I bar cloth now to pick up some of the more ingrained stuff. And again, get as much dirt off the surface as I can. So we're gonna get, yeah, this uh, got a clay bar cloth here from the Auto Smart Van. So I'll give it a go and see how that works out. So we're taking the rear light out and taking the number plate off. And then you can easily get off. You should do at this point. It saves you loads of masking and you get a better finish because you don't have any uh, lines, masking lines. So yeah, take off anything that's easy to get to while you're at it. So all, right, all been 400 gritted and then 800 gritted and then a thousand keyed on the edges where we're going to be fading out and giving a good clean so we've just got to put some primers down in areas where we've gone through the paint and then we'll be ready to start putting some color on so we got all masked off start putting a bit of filler primer um, on the worst areas where we went through uh, i did put a bit of plastic primer down on this first before the filler primer down always recommend that avoid uh, any reactions or any problems with it taking. So we'll do a few more coats of filler primer and then uh, start to get some colour on. So we've got a colour coat on, ready for lacquering. And then we'll fade out thinner down here and we'll fade up, fade out thinner here, like this. It's a little bit dark at the moment because it's uh, just had a coat on it. I'll double check that before I start putting any more on it. Yeah. So wet coat for lac has gone on. Um, it's still clearing at the moment. You get a little bit of haze in it when you put it on heavy in this colder weather. So uh, again, as always, this is the point where you just walk away and leave it alone because uh, there's not much you can do at this point and see how it looks later on and decide whether you want to redo anything or not. So we'll just let that all harden off now and clear and then we'll see where we are. So pop the headlights back in again, pop the number plate back on again. We'll let this paint harden off for a couple of days and then flat it back. But I think we could already see it looks a million times better than it did when I got hold of it. I'm into it for probably about two or three hours now with changing the sensor over and doing this paint work. So we haven't got a lot of time put into it. I've got a feeling this one's going to buff up into a really nice looking little car. I say only 72,000 miles on it, on a 2007 little 1.2 uh, MOT through till February next year, I think this one has got, or is it November? I don't know, it's got, it's got over, I think it's got more than six months MOT on it. But yeah, should make a little car, 1495 we'll stick this one up for. Right, we left it overnight, guys, came in this morning. I've buffed all the blend lines there. You can't see where it blends, not visible at all. Color match is good, blends into each other really well. We've got that bit of bumper. There's still a little bit of texture in the paint. There's still a very, very slight reaction from whatever people put on before. But as you can see, it looks 100 times better. We've blended in over this corner here. And again, you can't see. I'm actually really happy with the level of orange peel in the lacquer. I don't need to buff it back any further. It's actually uh, only the same as a factory fit sort of finish. So yeah, already starting to look shiny. So what we'll do now is give the rest of the car a clean so what are we into it now? Into it for an afternoon's work so far. That includes fitting the sensor, doing that paint. So I'm hoping in half a day I can get her cleaned up and get her up for sale. Um, obviously I've driven this car a number of times, checked it over, braking fine, gearbox fine, all those good things. We'll do a service on it. But I'm hoping only get another half day into it and then say stick out for $14.95 I think. Uh, it's only done 72,000 miles, 2007 long MOT. Um, yeah, she could do a little run around with someone.
So guys, the little course is done. She's had a machine polish. Um, she had that paintwork done. She had all the interior cleaned up, which wasn't too bad to be honest. It didn't need an awful lot. And I think she looks fantastic. So we've got the side I did the paintwork on over here. Color match is great, really good. Interior came up really nicely. The mats came up nicely. She's in really good nick. She's got one cigarette burn in the back seat there, but other than that, the seats are in really good condition. All the fabrics are really good. Well pleased with this little buy. So yeah, all super clean. I think someone's going to be chuffed. If you're a kid and your parents rocked up in this for you as a first car, I think you'd be happy with it, wouldn't you? And as a parent, if you could pick this up for around about, um, I'm going to say 14.95. I'm tempted to go a little bit higher now. It's come out looking like this, but for a little amount of money, you can turn up with something that's really smart for them. The Lambda sensor did the job. No engine management lights, and she's running smoothly again. Tires are all pretty much brand new, as we discussed before. And I've driven her a, a couple of times now, haven't I? No worries at all. So yeah, so 200 quid, uh, we'll go back to the office, we'll go through the numbers and see where we stand at the moment on those. Yeah, really pleased with this one. Uh, got, a, I'd say a day in it now, started probably on this about 12, uh, 10 o'clock this morning, it's now coming up to 3 o'clock, I've had a bit of a break in between chat to someone about alphas, um, but yeah, I'd say all in, I've got a day of, day of work in this one now. Here's the numbers on the Corsa. Bought it for £344 including fees. The car was only £200. 144 was the fees. Horrible, isn't it? Uh, Adrian went and picked it up for me £105. £50 contribution towards marketing and insurance. Um, I should put into the cars until I covered uh, the total cost of 300 for the month. Uh, two lots of paint from Marlowe's and the Lambda sensor. That has us in it for 626 Um if I sell at my minimum of fourteen ninety five, it gives me a uh, one thousand one hundred and fifty one pound margin against the initial purchase, which means I've got to pay the tax man one hundred ninety one pound in VAT, which would leave me six hundred and seventy seven pounds and nine pence, plus the reclaimed twenty one pound VAT for parts. So it takes me up to about six hundred, let's say six hundred eighty, uh, uh, sorry six hundred ninety pounds odd. Um, and obviously I've got to give Stuart his cut out of that as well. Odds on our, I'll probably end up spending another hundred pound in the car before it goes out the door. It's just the way it is. Um, maybe a claim on something a little bit later on, or some bits and bobs I decide to do before it goes out the door. So I, I should be in the region of five or six hundred pounds profit out of it, um, which for a day's work isn't bad. Like I say, after Stu's cut, probably four hundred pound in my pocket, um, and it'll be putting a nice little car back on the road. Oh yes, yeah, so I'm going to service it, aren't I? I'm going to do oil and filter on it, so that'll add. A few quid so yeah i imagine i'll spend another hundred quid on it no problem at all uh, but let's get it up on facebook marketplace motors car gurus it will go up on and let's see how we get on